Hi folks, building a digital audio workstation based on Raspberry Pi 5 500 or Compute Module 5 is a really difficult fit. It's got no analog audio outputs or inputs. It just got a Bluetooth adapter where you can connect wireless audio hardware like headphones, speakers and microphones. But if you already have a lot of analog audio hardware, you can start with an analog USB audio card with one stereo audio output and one mono or stereo audio input. If you want more stereo or mono audio outputs and inputs, then you can simply add more sound cards like this one. But many classic PC users are still buying sound blasters and other sophisticated audio cards with a number of analog audio inputs and audio outputs. And of course, a digital sound processor. Can Raspberry Pi or a classic PC replace all this sophisticated hardware with a number of cheap USB audio cards that cost no more than five to ten dollars. Without a digital sound processor, a computer's main processor has to take its role. But this is not so much of a problem if the computer is just used for sound processing. For example, the load on Raspberry Pi 5's CPU running at 2.4 GHz while combining analog audio inputs and outputs from two audio cards is only about 30%. The main memory occupancy is only about 4 GB running Windows 11, which implies that 8 GB is surely enough for a digital audio workstation implementation. There is another problem, which is even more intriguing, because if you want to connect a really sophisticated USB sound card to Raspberry Pi, you might find out that there are actually no drivers for it, for Raspberry Pi OS or even for Windows 11 that you can also run on it. The problem is that many of the most sophisticated audio cards only support x64 and x86 architectures. This means AMD or Intel processors, but they do not support ARM64 or RISC-V64 architectures. Connecting a number of simple USB audio cards that need no device drivers besides the plug-and-play audio capability of an operating system is technically not a problem and usually they all work with the applications and with the operating system. But the real problem is how to connect them to form a sophisticated virtual audio card with a number of audio inputs and a number of audio outputs and audio channel mixing and processing capabilities like a real-time equalizer which is needed with a digital audio workstation application. An application under any operating system, Unix or Windows alike, can only access one output audio device and one input audio device. At the same time, to access more, it needs a sophisticated device driver. To simplify, let's say that there is no problem of simultaneous recording of a sound with two different kind of applications like Adore and Audacity, while each of them is using a different sound input and a different sound output. But the real problem is how to mix the signals from different sound inputs and how to distribute a processed sound to various sound outputs in real time. This requires a specialized driver like ALSA in Linux or ASIO for all in Windows. Unfortunately, the later doesn't work on ARM64 architecture. However, if you use voice meter application, it very much does work in ARM64 architecture versions of Windows, but it uses a different driver, VAIO, and it turns Raspberry Pi 5, 500, Compute Model 5, 4 and 400 into real audio workstations. You can then use Audacity, Outdoor or any kind of other digital workstation application to record and process sound from different audio cards in real time and then also to distribute it to different audio cards outputs. I've also tried to find a similar application to voice meter that has only been developed for Windows for Raspberry Pi OS. Unfortunately, I was unable even to find a graphical ALSA configuration editor. I have read many blogs and I have discovered that what I have done in Windows to combine to mono audio channels from separate audio cards into one stereo audio recording which can also be played in real time 
on an audio output on an arbitrary audio card seems not to be possible on Raspberry Pi OS due to lack of adequate program libraries that would replace direct sound and synchronize different kind of audio cards to prevent time delays between audio channels of the same audio output. I'm not saying that there are no configuration examples for ALSA sound architecture, but they may be difficult to implement for a particular pair of sound cards, a configuration software or even runtime software which a graphical user interface is surely a better option. I hope that somebody is going to make such an application for Linux soon enough. Or we may start to prefer Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 5 instead of Raspberry Pi OS. And this, uh, we all know where it leads to. The use of mini PCs which are native to Windows 11. It is also interesting to note that macOS has a native sound card aggregation ability. This means that you can combine different kind of sound cards within the operating system into a single virtual sound card and this actually solves many of the problems and I think that maybe the next version of Windows would also have this kind of capabilities but I'm not so sure about the next version of Raspberry Pi OS. Let's hope so. What about other computers like Orange Pi 5 or Orange Pi 5 Max or Orange Pi 5 Plus? They are all capable of running Windows 11 and therefore I see no reason why you couldn't install this kind of audio workstation software on them as well. But if you prefer Linux, let me tell you that there are differences between different kind of Linux versions for x64 and x86 architecture compared to RM64 architecture. It seems that ALSA architecture may be better supported on Intel and AMD processors. What about the smallest Raspberry Pis like Raspberry Pi 0 and 0 2? The original Raspberry Pi 0 can only run 32-bit operating system, which can also be a Raspberry Pi OS bookworm edition. Though I think that there should be no promise attaching one or two audio cards. The same holds for Raspberry Pi 0 2 if you're running a 32-bit operating system on it, as well as Raspberry Pi 3. But if you decide to install a 64-bit operating system, Raspberry Pi OS on Raspberry Pi 0 2 or Raspberry Pi 3, you're gonna find out that certain kind of USB devices may run in problems. So the support is not very good for certain kind of USB hubs and also it may not recognize audio cards. So it's better to stick with a 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS operating system for this kind of computers. However, you cannot install Windows 11 because there is not enough RAM. What about Orange Pi RV2 which is RISC V 64-bit architecture based computer? Though I was able to connect the audio cards to its USB 3.0 ports, it was evident that the operating system would have not recognized them as plug-and-play audio devices and I had no available device drivers to run them. So the only audio devices that were recognized by the operating system were the internal audio codec and HMI audio output. This is interesting because RM64 based Orange Pi 5 has no such problems and it works very well with different kind of USB audio cards. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons and don't forget about the notification bell. See you in the next video. Bye.